Hey guys, there's something amazing inside this box, and it has to do with an upgrade that I'm going to do on the big wood miser here. Let's go to the bench and take a look. For those of you who are wondering, the simple set is simply a computer that, that sits on top of the control box of the wood miser. And so right now, there's a scale right here, and what you'd have to do is basically sort of guess or get as close as you could to every one of those marks to guess how thick your wood is. What the simple set does, all it really does is control the step down height from top to bottom. Let's look at some of the parts that come in the box. Some of the parts in here, new pulleys, new guards, computer wire, shrink tube, bracketing. This is the computer itself right here. What you get when you buy this is you get the wood miser instructions for how to operate it, which is very simple. You can probably figure it out without the instructions. And then of course right here is going to be the install instructions that are going to walk you through step by step how to put it in. But I think ultimately you're going to find that through this video it's going to be very easy for you to install this if you would want to do so in the future. The tools that you're going to need to do this job are going to be some basic wrenches, um, probably a screwdriver, a drill, um, and perhaps some sort of heat gun or something if you wish to do all the shrink wrapping and all of that. But for the most part your pretty basic tools that you would use with any mechanics tool set are going to be able to get you through this job. First things first, we have to make sure the sawmill head is up and remove the negative battery terminal. Obviously we're worth working with electronics here, so we don't want there to be any shorts happening along the way. So there we go. Alright, after disconnecting the negative battery terminal, the first thing we want to do is remove this cover right here that covers all of the uh, the motor and everything for raising up and down. And here's what it says, remove the, the drive belt housing cover to access the up-down system. That's this thing. Loosen the three up-down motor bolts and move the motor down to remove tension from the belt. Remove the belt, motor pulley, and motor. Disassemble the up-down motor bracket from the gearbox and replace with the provided bracket. Be sure to use the appropriate bracket for the type of gearbox gearbox on your sawmill. Secure the bracket to the gearbox with the previously removed hardware. And so you heard it, I'm going to have to take this apart, um, get the old motor out of there, and then replace the bracket and put the motor back in. This is the reason we have to remove this bracket, and I'll show you when we get to that point, is so that we can put the new sensor in there. So far, all the bolts are 7 16 The ones that control the tension for the motor. There's these two on the top right here, and then there's one underneath right here that you have to get. I think what I'm gonna to try to do is just take this entire bracket with the motor out of it, and then I'll mess with this after I get it out. The next bolts I'm trying to remove are right in here, and they are attached directly to the top of the gearbox. Okay, so now I've got the motor removed off of the top of the gearbox housing. It comes with two new brackets. So it's got these. And the reason for that is, is that you could have two different types of gearboxes on this depending on the year of the machine. So mine says that if you have a Grove gearbox, it gets one. And if you have the newer one, it gets a different one. And this one is a Grove. And so mine is going to be this one and not that one. Now this is just for my machine. Well, how do you know which bracket to use if you don't know what, what name it is? Well, that's simple. You simply grab the old bracket and it will look just like the bracket you just had. On the bottom, it will be the same width. The only difference, if you look, is this one right here has these two holes on the bottom. And that's the only difference between the two brackets. So we're going to go through and basically reassemble everything in reverse order. And um, the one thing I am going to have to do is I took this motor out and made sure to check that the brushes aren't bad. The brushes actually look okay in it and the bearings look okay in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in. This is, oddly enough, the original motor. Um, it says on there the original date, which is from 1999. All right, this is an older motor and believe it or not, the positive and negative don't really matter on this um, when it's being installed. So the newer ones do have a red and a black 
on the terminals and the boots. This has a red and a black wire, but on the motor itself, it doesn't matter. You can hook it up either way. Everything that I see from the pictures is telling me that this bracket installs right here over the, uh, the motor bolts. So, um, like I said, I'm waiting for a new pulley to come. That could be a few days. So what I'm gonna do is just tighten one of these down, which is gonna hold the motor in place and then install the bracket on the top too. And then when it comes time to retension the belt and everything, um, this will just take care of itself once I get the pulley and the belt on it. Now if you have the ITPS gearbox in your kit, there's gonna be another pulley, and you're going to have to replace that pulley on your gearbox. Um, you don't wanna to try to replace this on the Grove because the bore size is different, and you'll never get that on there. And I measured both of these, and it's the same size wheel, so if you have the Grove, you already have the right size pulley on your machine. Okay, so normally where you would be at this point is you would have your pulley on here. Again, uh, I cracked mine getting it off. I'd use a puller because it was on there so tight. Um, but you would have your pulley on here already and you would have your belt on there. So remember that. Um, what we're going to do now is put this on here. And this is part of the sensor. Well, this is the sensor um, that makes the machine know where it is when it's going up and down. And I'll tell you how it works. Um, this right here is a, is a little bearing uh, set screw shaft that fits onto the shaft right here. And what it does is this tells the machine how many times it has went revolutions. And that's obviously the more times this revolves up down, it, uh, that's how the machine works. So how do you like that definition? But basically there's one little bracket on the back right here and that attaches to this bracket, and then the shaft has a set screw that fits on here. Um, one thing they don't tell you in the instructions is that you may have to move your bracket back and forth, and you may have to put the pulley closer to the bracket so that you can get this shaft uh, securely fit on there. So we're going to go ahead and put this on for now, and then later on I'm going to have to take it off when I get my new pulley uh, and all of that to put on there. But I want to at least show you how this is supposed to work and then go from there. Your bracket system should now look something like this. Um, this should be attached in the back. I don't have mine all the way attached because I know I'm going to have to take it apart later and I'm going to have to clean up um, some of the shafts in order to get this fit on there. It, thankfully, it's a good snug fit, which means that you know it's not going to get sloppy when it's rotating. So that'll give you more accurate measurements. Now we got to go to the next part. In the kit, you're going to get a baggie that should look something like this. And this baggie has all kinds of different things in it. Right now, what I want to show you is this yellow wire and the zip ties. This is the sensor wire that is going to connect from this sensor up to the computer in your, in your new control box. There is a positive and a negative on this, so it should be self-explanatory which one goes on. Another thing I can tell you from having one of these machines in the past and working on this stuff before is that the length of cable that they give you is probably three feet more than you actually need. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to give yourself enough to get up to the control box and then take the rest and bundle it up here. So what you'll want to do is start up at the top and then zip tie your way back up here and then zip tie your bundle in here to where the weather can't get to it. Okay, so I have an update for the video right in the middle of the video here. Uh, a couple reasons for that. Uh, one reason is after I got into this, I realized that I was going to have to replace my main up and down motor. And so I ordered a new one of those from Woodmiser. Thankfully, I live only a couple hours south of Indy. And so um, I was a, I, most of the parts that I get from Woodmiser I can get next day, which is really nice. <laughs> and so I got a new pulley, because I had broken the old pulley getting, getting it off, because it was seized on the old motor. And then I got a new motor. And so that's what I did. I want to show you real quick now just what this should look like when it's all put together. So here's the new sensor. You have a bracket here. There's a tiny bracket back here, and then you, you will probably have a new pulley to replace on top. Um, just so you know, there are two different size pulleys that you can have on a wood miser. This is the bigger one, and there's one that's smaller than this. And of course, the difference is, is if you have a bigger pulley on top, you're going to get a quicker motion up and down. Smaller pulley on top, a slower motion up and down. And so I had actually ordered a, another pulley and gotten the one I didn't want, so I got the bigger one. The other modification I had to make, um, you have to push this pulley back in order to get the bearing on here for the sensor. And when I did that, 
Um, what it does is there's two bolts that hold this bracket back here and I just had to shave like maybe a sixteenth of an inch off the bolt because it was grinding on this pulley a little bit. But that's about it, not too difficult. You see the little bracket up here, this little custom made bracket Woodmeister sends you is just to keep the sensor out of the way of all the driving parts up here. And then the last thing that I did, um, which, you, which I'll show you here, if you see here where the wire is coming off that top bracket, like I said, Woodmiser sends uh, in this kit, this wire is like probably three feet longer than it has to be. Um, and I bundled it up up here, so it's going to be inside the shroud when I put the shroud back on. And then it keeps it out of the way of all of the moving parts. And so you'll have to do something with your wires and put those somewhere. I think that's the best place to put them. This next part is a little trickier. And here's what it says. Before reinstalling the drive belt housing cover, which is the cover that goes over all of this, it will need to be modified to clear the sensor assembly. Here's the housing cover that we took off, and basically what it's asking us to do is to cut a big hole right there. So we're going to have to cut a hole in that, and then we're going to have to put this plate that they send us over that, and that's essentially going to modernize it um, so that we can get this system working. Now you might be saying, how unfair is that, that I have to do that to my machine? How in the world am I going to know where to put that cover? In the instructions, they show you exactly where to cut that with all of the dimensions. So we're going to go to the shop, and we're going to mark all that out, and we're going to get our cutting wheel, and we're going to cut a hole in this thing. I'll also note that they give you a little baggie with all of the hardware that you're going to need in order to put that cover on there. Okay guys, so now we're pretty much to the part of this where we have went from more of the mechanical side of the things to where we're going to start doing more of the electrical side of things and eventually get this simple set control box mounted on top. This is what it tells us to do is to remove the sawmill control box lid which is this part right here um, which and, and the front panel. So we're going to remove this entire front panel off of here. Um, there is supposed to be <laughs> A hole plug, a hole that's right in the middle of this, and there's supposed to be a plug you can take out. Mine does not have that, because mine's an older model, and so I'm going to have to put some kind of a hole in there, which will be another thing I'll have to do that you probably won't have to. And there's supposed to be two center plug screws, which we'll see if there's anything. I don't know why this tape is on here, but maybe I'll find the plug screws when that comes out. If not, then I'm going to have to drill a couple more holes to make room for those also. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to have to remove the drum switch on the end here so that we can access all of that. So, enough talking, let's show you how. Alright, I want to show you guys, I took the tape off of the top of my main control box here and remember I said there's supposed to be a big hole in the middle well what I found is is that that hole is over here and also where the tape was on this side was four separate locations for screws in the back I know that it's getting late in the day so there's some weird shadows here now what this tells me is that this machine was more than likely set up for the AccuSet program because those four holes and the hole being up here is a dead giveaway for that I've already put the smaller control box from the simple set on here and the gasket runs right on the edge here and so um, minimally what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to install my simple set without drilling a hole in the middle because I have one right there and I'm going to see if I can make that work. If I can then I'm good to go. Okay so I see I think that this is going to fit. I think it's going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover these wires so that they won't abrade in this hole in here um, because there's a lot of vibration in a sawmill and one thing that happens is wires get ground out all the time 
and you lose operation, you don't know why. So I'm going to do a little preventative maintenance on that, and then I'll hook up the wires. Okay, this is the tricky part. Um, it says in the instructions to take the orange wire, number 14, and the black wire, number 15, from the up-down switch. And you're going to ask yourself when you're looking at this, this is marked 2, 4, 6, and 1, 3, 5 on the bottom. And you're going to say, I don't see a 14 or a 15. Where you have to look is on the wires themselves. So this is an orange wire, but there's no marking on it. And you're not going to see this in the video. But on this orange wire, there is a 14 stamped in black going all the way on it. So that's the wire we have to take off. And then on this black one, there is a 15 you may be able to see on there. So what it's asking us to do is to take these wires off and then to reconnect the terminal. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to get this switch out of the way quick. Now we've got our orange and our black. And what it wants us to do is to connect the orange to the yellow. And it wants us to connect the black to the purple. And then once we get those connected, it wants us to cut this tube and sort of run it like so, covering both of these terminals. Let's just skip to the end result on that one, okay? Okay, so here's the orange and yellow and purple and black. And they give you this weird little boot and there's nothing in between here. These are connected. And then I zip tied them together like it asked me to do. This is gonna get tucked back in there. Now what we have left is a black a big black one, a big red one, a little yellow one, and a little blue one. And so the black one is going to get connected to the ground in the back of the control box. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to take off the back cover of your control box because the ground wire is right down in here. I can see that mine, you can't see it, but I can see that it's very rusted. But the ground terminal is just a bolt from underneath with a nut on top. So if I can get it off and it's in bad condition, I'm just gonna replace it with a new one. Well, through the power of video editing, um, I got that ground wire attached. I think every ground wire in the world goes to that ground wire. That is the Medusa of ground wires. It is the Oprah Winfrey of ground wires. You get a ground wire and you get a ground wire. Um, needless to say, I had to cut the bolt off because it was rusted. Uh, clean up a new spot, put a new bolt in, and then reattach all of the 10,000 ground wires that go back there. And I saved you the hassle of that, because um, your machine will probably be easier. Um, I did attach the red wire, um, and I'm doing something kind of experimental. Now it's calling to connect that wire to one of these two um, breakers. But what I'm doing instead is I connected my red wire to the primary um, power that is coming to the machine right here. And so um, I don't really anticipate a problem there because the breaker is going to trip because it is attached to the switch. So if there's an overload, that's still going to trip and not cause a problem. All I have left now is these two tiny wires, a yellow and a blue. And the instructions say to connect the yellow wire to terminal number four, which is this one in the middle right there. And now it says to hook up the blue wire to terminal number five which is on the opposite side, which is this guy right here. You may or may not have noticed that I took the screws and put them back into the drum switch when I was taking this out, and that's so that I don't lose anything. Just a practice that I've learned over the years to not lose your screws, so. So, I've been sidetracked multiple times during this project today, doing other things, and so, this is not an all-day project if you have any idea what you're doing. Um, but I've been sidetracked and so I'm trying to get this thing buttoned up so that I can be done for the day. Now we just need to put this panel back on, reconnect the battery terminal, and that's it. Then we'll see if uh, this comes on when we turn the machine on. Um, like I said, I'm waiting for a pulley, so it's going to be a few days until I get that. And then we'll look at it in Movie Magic once again. You'll see this thing working. Okay, so as daylight was running out, I realized that I was not going to have enough time to finish, and that's okay. I had a couple other things that I had to do anyhow. As I said earlier in the video, I had to order a new motor and a new pulley, and I didn't really see that happening when I was first getting into this project. But now it's a totally different day, and everything is installed. All the ground wires are put in place. We have power. Um, the only 
little thing that happened is after I had installed everything, I pressed up and it went down and pressed down and it went up. And that could be two things, either your drum switch is not wired correctly or your motor is reversed. And because of the way the motors work on this, um, you can just switch the positive and negative and it will work the same. Uh, and that's a quick way to fix it because there was nothing wrong with the drum switch. And even though there's a positive and negative, the truth of the matter is, is that it's sending a positive to one lead when it's going up and a positive to the other lead when it's going down. So there's a little technical information for you. Uh, but I was able to fix that pretty easily. And so now let's just look at the machine and let's see it work uh, just simply going up and down and just so, show you some of the features of the simple set. Again, they call it simple for a reason. So let's go ahead and look at the machine and we'll just watch it do its thing. This is about as good of a shot as I can get for you. And I do have some condensation inside the screen already, um, which is fairly normal actually for these. I just have it on accessory right now. It is on manual mode and I don't know how well you can read the screen, but I'll show you. So the hand is manual. And then this one with the little arrows that is going around, that's gonna be what activates the simple set, okay? So there you go. And you can have two settings. So you press this again and you can go back and forth between the settings. And if I wanted to change that, I just press up or down and if you want to move it fast, you just hold the button down and it will move it rapidly to where you want to go. And so I tend to keep two settings in here uh, when I'm cutting. Um, I will keep two and three sixteenths. And then I got one and three sixteenths. And so if you want to do manual, you just go like this and then you move your switch up and down. Or if you want to be simple set, you press that one and then automatically you're ready to go. So right now it's set on the simple set mode. I got it set on my basically one inch cut and all I do is press the drum switch down and that's it. If I wanted to switch to a two inch drop, I just press the button to go into the other setting, press it again, and it's that simple. And you can set any height that you want. You could set it to 10 inches if you want on this thing and just cut it repeatedly over and over. Well, now with all of this, I'm pretty sure I have a fully functioning machine. And so from here on out, it's gonna get back to doing more videos of turning those logs into lumber. And I'm really looking forward to doing that and looking forward to you all watching those videos in the future. Thanks for watching guys. God bless, have a good one.